One of the amazing things about chemistry is that it's everywhere once you start to look for it. Take the lowly purple cabbage. Aside from being a fantastic example of artificial selection, chock full of vitamins, dietary fiber, and let's admit it, an absolute knockout, the cabbage's best kept secret is lurking within its cells. A group of flavonoid molecules called anthocyanins are the source of the cabbage's health benefits, their antioxidants, good for your heart health, and they're also the source of the cabbage's alluring purpley color. Let's start with the purple color and then examine a fascinating trick that the anthocyanin has up its sleeve. Here is a representation of the anthocyanin molecule. It's a fairly common structure for small biologically active molecules, two fused rings on one side and another six membered carbon ring on the other. So why is it purple? Well, the light in the room is a mixture of all colors, which is why it appears white. When this white light bounces off the anthocyanin molecules, the green and yellow light are absorbed by the molecule, but not the red, the blue, and the purple. They bounce off the cabbage and hit us on the eyeballs. We interpret the mixture as purple. Now, the trick that the anthocyanins have up their sleeve is that the colors absorbed and reflected will change with the pH or acidity of the solution. But to investigate this effect and figure out why it works, first, we need to get the anthocyanins out of the cabbage. If you have someone in your life who you would go to if you were looking for a dynamite cabbage soup recipe, that's the person you want to talk to now because they're the expert at getting anthocyanins out of cabbage. Essentially, we're going to make cabbage soup. After breaking up the cabbage a little bit, we're gonna put it onto the hot plate and boil it for, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. Really what we're going for is color. As we extract the purple anthocyanins into the water, the solution is gonna get darker and we take it off when we feel like it's dark enough. You can see what I decided on here. Pour it off or strain it and let it cool. Now the real fun can begin. I've prepared a series of buffers at the pHs listed here. One, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13. I've actually made them all, but we're gonna start with the odd numbers. You notice that as I pipette the cabbage juice into the pH 7 buffer, the color is similar to the original cabbage. That's a sign that the original cabbage was close to neutral. Now, what about the pH 5? Notice the cabbage juice turns more of a pink color. The anthocyanin must be absorbing more of the blue light and reflecting more of the red. At pH 9, the opposite. The anthocyanin is now absorbing more of the red and reflecting more of the blue light. And the result is much more blue. At pH 3, an even redder color. Not very much blue is being reflected here at all anymore. A big change at pH 11. Notice now very little red light is being reflected. We get a very green result. And here are the last two of the series, the pH 1 and the 13, which is interesting in how yellow it is, especially after it sits for a minute. Okay, so those are pretty colors, but why does it change? Let's start with the acid. At low pH, in the presence of a large excess of hydrogen ions, the anthocyanin is converted to the flavillium cation, shown here. This change in shape affects the way the molecule interacts with incoming light. So much more of the incoming yellow-green light is absorbed, causing the reflected or transmitted light to be vibrant red color, red mixed with some purple and blue. In base, there's an excess of hydroxide ions. The molecule's shape changes even more drastically. The reaction breaks the second ring, causing the formerly flat section of the molecule to twist. This new form of the molecule now absorbs most of the red and violet light, reflecting the yellow and green. What about intermediate colors? The green, the light pink. Well, at intermediate pHs, there will exist a mixture of multiple forms of the molecule. Looking at the green pH 11, there are some of the yellow molecules which are absorbing a lot of the blue light and some of the blue ones which are absorbing a lot of the yellow light. So when they're mixed together, it's really only the green light that's able to escape. If we look at the complete pH range, we see an expansion of the same trend with more of the intermediate mixed colors present. The cabbage juice can then be used quite effectively as a universal indicator with the color of the sample compared against a reference to determine the pH of an unknown solution. 
The purple cabbage is the distant descendant of the wild mustard plant, first cultivated 6,000 years ago and gradually molded through the process of artificial selection into the amaranthine beauty now grown all over the world. Those early farmers never could have predicted that the ultimate vegetables of their labors would be such a magnificent plant, as useful for science as it is for coleslaw. But I like to think they'd be proud of us. Until next time.